Hi Gators, so with Majestic Riders. So today we're taking a hike. Anybody want to take bets to see if I'm going to make it there or not today? I don't have lunchbox with me. And today we pitched a challenge. I've been on this trail many times with my horse and one of the paths go off to the right. So I'm going to see if it goes out to the beach. And I don't care how far it is, but we're going to try and make it. Many of you either want to take up riding or you are a rider, but what some people don't know is that riding is a sport and that to do sports, you need to be in shape and to do riding and to balance yourself and do a good job with the horse, the better shape you're in, the better you can balance your body, the more you can help your horse. How many times have you heard your friends talking about their horse tripping and you're thinking in your head, well, it might be them because they're riding very sloppy. They don't ride very well. And when the horse misses a step, which we all miss steps, you know, just even walking, I might trip and oh, like that, you know? And so if I had somebody on my back and when I tripped and fell forward, they fell forward, especially if they're top heavy, well then that would make you fall Sometimes to the ground. People don't understand that concept. They're like the horse should just be able to carry me. Well, no. Especially when you're on a gated horse, they can do so many things with their legs. Sometimes they can't figure out what to do with their legs when you're knocking them over. So think if you've ever tripped when flying and you're like, oh my God, I caught myself, thank God. But if you were tripping and falling and trying to catch yourself, then someone leaped on your back and threw all that weight forward, you'd fall down, right? So you want to be in shape when you're riding is the point. You want to learn to balance yourself and all make some videos with exercises for you to do. But one is to start walking. And walking is one of the easiest things, all you need is sneakers. And you might not be able to walk very far in the beginning, but over time, you'll be able to go further and further. And nobody said you can't stop and uh, take a break. You can, lunchbox. He's like, no, let's not take a break. But you can take a break as much as you want. And you slowly build it up. You don't go out and you're not walking 10 miles, which I might do today. Uh, so if you can't even walk a mile, then one day you walk a block. And then three days or four days after that, you walk further, but you keep it at a block until you can do the block well, and then you push yourself. Just like you're trying to push your horse's gait to get better. So many of you think, well, I don't have to exercise. The horse will carry me so-and-so. Well, if your horse ever gets hurt, fall down, Something happens with your friend, you might have to walk back and get help. And if you can't walk back and get help, you better hope your phone works <laughs> because sometimes that's the only option you have. So the better shape you're in might help to go get help or help your friend get back up and get back on their horse. But if you're in horrible shape, you're not gonna help them at all. Now, other people say, well, my back hurts, my legs hurt, my knees hurt, blah, blah, blah. Well, I want you to think how old you are. And remember, I worked in orthopedics, if you didn't know that, orthopedic surgery. And as you get older, it just gets worse. Your joints get more arthritic, your hormones change, and everything just gets worse. So this is your time to get yourself in shape to be ready for the rest of your life. So at 90, you can keep hiking and you can keep moving instead of being stuck in a wheelchair. Now, some things are against us. You might say, well, I have immune disorder or other things. Yes, that's different. But still, you wanna do as much as you can because see how beautiful it is out here? You can't see that unless you get out here. And the day you're stuck in bed and you can't move anymore, you're stuck in a nursing home, you're gonna think, all those times that I sat home, binging on the TV, playing on the computer, watching gays videos all day long, I could have been out walking. I could have seen the sights. I could have seen birds. Walk the path that Gay's walking. I could have tried to make it to the beach. I could have saw her dog crying and making a fuss. <laughs> I could have saw people's horses in their backyards and all sorts of beautiful things, but I opted not to. I opted to complain and I opted to feel bad for myself and I opted not to do any of those things. And that's why you're in the position you're in the position. Remember, as you get older, it's only gonna get worse. It's much easier to get in shape when you're younger and then to stay in shape than to try it as you get older. But if you have back pain, hip pain, whatever you have, just try. Try exercises 
If those hurt, try different exercises. Just do as many as you can. If you can't move well, it's not gonna matter if you're in pain or not. The more you move, the better you'll feel over time, but it might be a living hell in the beginning, but you have to start somewhere. Don't just sit around and don't just sit on your horse. Expect them to carry you when you're in horrible shape. So when they act up or they get scared and spook sideways, you just flop over and fall because you have poor balance and no muscle tone, okay? So a lot of people I see fall off, that's part of the problem. Their horse trip, they fall off. The horse spooks sideways, they fall off because they have not only no control and don't know how to ride well because they don't want to take lessons, um, but they don't want to get in shape either. And so this is called a sport for a reason. It's called riding for a reason. It's not called be a passenger on a horse because that would be a whole different thing. But that's what happens with a lot of these things. And then people blame their horses over and over again for doing all these horrible things. So just remember, you want to train your horse. You do want to learn, but you also want to get in shape so you can ride your horse and help them instead of hurt them. And remember also, because I see this a lot with people tailgating, I'll try to make a video on that. If you can't see the footing ahead of your horse because you're so close to the horse in front of you, that means your horse can't see it. And I want you to think if you were just walking up on top of somebody. I was walking right up on top of Lunchbox. So see here, I can see the footing. Lunchbox, walk. Walk. He's like, what? But what? Come on. He's like, what are you doing? Lunchbox. What if I walk? Come on. Walk. Right on top of him like that. He won't do it. Lunchbox, come. Then I wouldn't be able to see where I was going. So if a rock comes up, you just trip on the rock. And then when you have someone fall forward on you, then what do you do? Fall down. And then and gets labeled a tripper. And really the whole problem is that they couldn't see. On the ground, stumps, roots. Horses trip on this stuff all the time because they're either not paying attention, they trip, or they don't see it because they're on the top of the horse in front of them. So remember, our horses kind of drag their feet. They don't always pick them up. That's why they have good endurance. So if they can't see, or I should say, if you can't see, they can't see. And that's dangerous. And no matter how many horses you go through, no matter how many different horses you pick, if you ride them like that, most all the horses will start tripping. And I tell people, ride in front because they'll pay more attention if you're gonna do that. So be an active rider. Be a rider who is in shape and balanced and help your horse. Remember when you sent them to training, you might want to go to yourself a while the horse is gone and get yourself in riding shape. Exercise. Go to the gym. If you don't want to do that, take walks. Practice stepping over stuff. Realize trails are harder to walk on than you think. And then imagine having someone on your back who's not balanced at all. Remember, it's only going to get worse as we get older. So this is my call to all those people sitting on the couch. Come on. Let's go out. Let's go exercise. Let's see if we can make it to the beach. Something else I want to show you because this is sand. So this is like your arena. Everybody's arena is different. Your arena should be about two inches, okay, deep. It just happened that's what this was right here. But footing gets kicked around. And so what people don't realize is see now my hand's buried all the way in this one. So the spots change. And when your horse, when you're riding your horse and footing like that, they start picking up their feet a certain amount, just like I'm picking up, where are my feet? I'm picking up my feet a certain amount, but if I'm not paying attention because I'm talking on the phone and I don't pick it up high enough, what's gonna happen? I'm gonna catch my toe on something like a, a tree root and I might trip. So, but it's the same with the arena. If your footing goes from one inch to six inches, it's very likely that your horse might trip. And then if you lose your balance, you're going to trip and knock them over. Okay. And that's a horse that wouldn't have tripped if the footing was good, but wouldn't have fallen down if you were able to balance yourself and you were a good rider. Okay. So those are two things. So if your horse keeps tripping in the arena, go get a ruler. And I want you to try and put the ruler down in different spots where you've noticed your horse tripping. If they trip, you get off and put the ruler down. And then go in all the bunch of different, at least six to nine other places in the arena, and you check the measurements. And if you see that it goes from one inch to six inches to four inches from two inches, you can't expect your horse to have an idea how high to pick his feet up because he doesn't even know what an inch is. He doesn't know that he should pick them up higher at certain times and lower at other times because the footing is changing, okay? So if your horse is tripping in the arena, just know 
something could be wrong with them, but it also might just be the arena footing and that you're not riding them well and you're, when they trip and lose their footing, you're knocking them off balance and you're knocking them onto the ground and then you're falling off. But the key is check the footing, fix the footing, and then get in better shape and practice. I see so many people who never practice this at all. Practice leaning back. Practice sitting in a chair, having somebody push you, and you leaning back. And get your back muscles stronger, your stomach muscles stronger, and your balance better. And it'll make a huge difference in what that horse does and how well you stay on or don't stay on your horse in the future. Okay, we're getting closer. Getting close. Hey, we made it. So there's lots of dogs at Carmel Beach if you ever want to bring your dog and let it run loose. And this is in the quieter part. You don't like dogs. Okay, so lots of dogs can gate, if you didn't know that. And come on, Lunchy, let's go. So my dog, he's trotting right now, but he can naturally gate. And we usually do a pace or a step pace. And this is kind of the same with your horse. Right now he's trotting. Lunchy, stay. Okay, now he's gating, coming towards me. Okay. So... Why? The reason I'm showing you this is because your horse is the same way. They can do all sorts of different things. And just when they get tired, they change what muscles they're using and they start doing a different gait. So same as the dog. The terrain affects it, his muscles, he's tired. So it keeps changing around to make his endurance better. So now he's doing like a step pace. Come on, let's go. Okay, he's still gating. See how he looks funny from behind? That's why your horse looks funny going up the hill. They're gating up the hill, so they always look a little weird when they do it. So, I'm not riding my dog, so I don't care what he does. He just changed to a trot. Now that he's going downhill, he's like, this is easier. So, if you don't tell your horse what to do, they just keep changing what they're doing. And they never get better at it because they don't stick in it. So, when you hear naturally gated, it doesn't mean that they're going to, you know, like my dog is naturally gated. He's not going to do this the whole way home. He's just going to keep changing. Every time his muscles or the train changes, he's going to change what he's doing. And he'll go from a trot to a step pace and a pace. So remember, you have to train your horse, help them to use their muscles so they can stay in gait the entire time you're riding them. So even though they're naturally gated, they will not stay in gait unless you show them how and you ride them correctly. Because if you're doing things with your weight, that's also gonna change for them and it'll make it either easier for them to gate, which is what you're hoping for, or you'll make it harder for them to gate because he was being So you'll either make it easier for them to gate and that's what we're hoping for by me making all these videos, or you're gonna make it harder for them to gate if you're not riding them correctly. Remember, if you don't know what you're doing, the pace is a gate, the step pace is a gate, the flat walk is a gate, even the trot is a gate, okay? But if you don't know the different gates and you think your horse, when it's pacing, that's the correct gate, you keep telling them the right thing, that's the right thing to do, that's gonna make your horse keep pacing. So again, you're trying to educate yourself as much as you can and take lessons from the right people or learn online 
or send me videos. Remember, I teach online so you know what the correct gate is so you're working for the right thing and not working for the wrong gate. Come on.